How do we actually examine a world we can't see with the naked eye? Well, in this video I am going to give an introduction in how I use standard culturing methods and PCR to identify bacteria. I tested the fermentation setup for the presence of any bacteria and potentially some new species. For the fermentation you need a closable jar and something to cut your vegetables with. After cleaning everything with some ethanol, except the vegetables which harbor the bacteria of interest, you cut the vegetable in pieces that fit the jar. I used a Jerusalem artichock, but you can use any vegetable or fruit. You need to squeeze the pieces in place so they won't float when you add your salt solution. Next I had to make the 2% salt solution, so I added 5 grams of salt to 250 milliliters of water. After making sure the salt dissolved, you can pour the solution in the jars. I did this for 3 jars to make sure at least one would be successful. After closing the jars, I put them aside for a few days so the fermentation process could take place. In this process, bacteria like lactococci will reproduce anaerobically in the jars using the artichoke as a substrate. A week later, I took some samples from the jars and played them on MRS media on which lactococci specifically grow very well. In the dilution streaking technique, an inoculating loop is sterilized in a flame and allowed to cool. The loop is used to collect a drop of liquid from a bacterial culture. With the loop held flat on the agar, the drop of liquid is streaked across the region of the agar plate surface. As the loop moves, organisms begin to rub off the loop. The loop is sterilized and cooled again. This time, the loop streaks over the first pass, collecting a small number of bacteria and spreading them into a fresh area of the dish. The procedure is repeated again. Toward the end of this streak, few bacteria remain on the loop. So at that point, individual cells will land and stick to different places on the agar surface. If the medium contains the proper nutrients and growth factors, a single cell will multiply into many millions of offspring, forming a colony. In general, a pure culture can now be obtained by touching a single colony with a sterile loop and streaking it onto fresh media. After obtaining isolated cultures you want to identify, you can start the identification process. Different bacterial species are classified as gram-positive or gram-negative, depending on whether they retain the gram stain. In the gram stain procedure, a dye such as crystal violet binds to the bacteria. Remember to work sterile and then take some bacteria from an isolated colony and put it into a drop of water on a microscope plate. Let the water dry to the air or spit it up with a flame. Now you add the crystal violet stain. After the excess stain is washed off, we apply a binding agent, like an iodine solution which contains iodide ions. The iodide complexes with the positively charged crystal violet molecules trapped inside the cells. The crystal violet iodide complex is now held more strongly within the cell wall. The thicker the cell wall, the more crystal violet iodide molecules are held. Next we add the decolorizer, ethanol, for a precise time interval, which removes loosely bound crystal violet iodide molecules. But gram positive cells retain the stain tightly and will appear dark blue under a microscope. In the final step, a counter stain, safranin, is applied. This process allows the visualization of gram-negative material, which is stained pale pink by the safranin. In this example you can easily distinguish the dark blue gram-positive colonies, the pale pink gram-negative colonies. Make sure to make another agar plate from the same colony after every test, so we can perform multiple tests on the same bacteria species. Bacteria have long been classified on the shape and appearance of individual cells stained with a certain color, like the gram stain but also the possibility of certain substances in the medium to metabolize or to secrete specific exoenzymes in different media. Today it still remains interesting to test the range of these properties of bacteria, to check an identification or because such a test is much easier and we did several of these tests. For example the catalyze test, which checks the presence of the coenzyme catalyze by producing these little oxygen gas bubbles after breaking down added hydrogen peroxide or the methyl red test, where methyl red is added to a grown culture and a red coloration indicates acidification of the medium. Next, we also determine the generation time from the colonies of interest, which is the time a culture needs to double its cells. 
You can measure the growth of a culture indirectly by incubating it in a warm water bed at 30 degrees Celsius and measuring the optical density of the culture solution with a spectrophotometer every 15 minutes for a couple of hours. When time passes, more cells grow. The cell solution will become more cloudy and the measured OD, the optical density, will increase. You obtain a graph like this one and you can calculate the generation time with this handy formula and use the result to get additional information about your colony. Finally, we use the polymerase chain reaction or PCR to multiply the 16S RDNA from the colonies of interest. This DNA codes for a part of the ribosomes which are essential for the survival of every living cell and are therefore well preserved. There are small differences between every species and this is why we use this piece of DNA as a bacterial fingerprint. To start off, for each colony to be tested, I pipetted 40 microliters of PCR water into one PCR tube. Tap the colony you want to analyze with the sterile pipette tip and place it in the water in the PCR tube. Put the tubes in the microwave for 3 minutes to make sure potential agarose is dissolved. Because this can interfere with your measurement. Then you add the master mix, which contains all the reagents for the PCR reaction except for the target DNA, which is in the bacterial cells. Then place the tube in the PCR device after which the colonies will be identified by comparing with databases. How this identification works I preserve for a future video. When obtaining all the results we can compare if the different methods agree with each other and if they do, you can be pretty certain the identification is correct. Thanks to the University of Antwerp for making this video possible.